Hello, everyone. I am uh, Claudio Morgan, the host of the Spiritual Inspired uh, Show, and my guest uh, today is Dan Ladner. A secular weirdo had a spontaneous mystical experience, tried to report it to a scientist to get a brain scan, then got involuntarily committed and told by psychiatrists that mystical experiences don't exist. How it is that neuroscientists are studying the brain waves and biomarkers that correspond to these non-ordinary states, but the mainstream mental industry doesn't acknowledge that they exist. The Dang Lantern podcast explores consciousness and the ways we talk about it, psychology, neuroscience, spirituality, religion, philosophy, anti-psychiatry, as well as ineffably and the many reasons that these things are hard to talk about. <clears throat> Dan, thank you very much for uh, joining me today. Thanks for having me. So you had that, uh, you know, experience and you might be tired of talking about it and the interaction with the uh, neuroscientists, but can you please uh, rewind the events for us? Yeah, sure. So basically I went the first 34 years of my life, not realizing that psychology and spirituality exist. I don't know how to put it better than that. I think the word for what I was, was dissociated in some ways. I, I mean, I had a full life. I had lots of adventures. I had girlfriends. I wasn't, you know, wallowing in despair all the time. I just never really thought about emotions or for sure never thought about spirituality. And the funny thing with that is I even sat two meditation retreats because I heard nurse, neuroscientists say that it's good for your brain. And I was into brain science stuff and, um, you know, I just thought it was interesting, you know, listening to TED Talks and Invisibilia and that kind yeah. of thing. So I just didn't, it's kind of like I didn't have vocabulary for those parts of myself, for those aspects of experience. And then what happened was I found out that I have super duper ADD or the way that my nervous system is uh, through a diagnostic lens. ADD is the word that they give someone like me, right? So typical of people finding this out about themselves, this completely blew my mind. And uh, I read a book called Scattered Minds by Gabor Mate. And it was like just seeing this missing piece of myself that explained so much of my behavior, so much of how I process the world and everything just clicked. So I, it allowed me to reframe my um, life narratives so far, my relationship with my parents, how I was at school. You know, I've always been quirky, but this gave me a new kind of vocabulary for it both from a sort of scientific lens and also to describe my own experience to myself. And what it did was allow my emotions to come online. Um, and I started having like, I started having psychology. I cried about some stuff, had some big releases and had this whole, um, just in, you know, intense inner experience, figured out what doing the work means or whatever. But I, I was just reading this book, and I didn't expect this to happen. I was at home, like not trying too hard and it all just kind of happened. Um, so that was the most profound experience of my life. Completely changed how I experienced myself in the moment, how I think about my past, how I operate in the world. And I had about 10 days where I was reading this book and just going through all this stuff. Um, and then, yeah, I had this spontaneous experience. <clears throat> which, well, let me just continue with the story, but it, you know, this okay. like mind blowing, like uh, connect with the universe, cheesy as can be everything they say it is. And it felt like I read myself there through psychology and neuroscience. It was like, I was having this really intense, really intense, almost mystical experience. Like my sense of self is being played with. I'm like, oh, I'm not that pattern. I'm not that pattern. I'm kind of unraveling myself and just realizing all these things that are ADD symptoms and not me and learning about how my brain is literally, you know, there's no self in there. It's just all these different parts and getting words for the bandwidths. And it was already weird. And then it just becomes something totally different, you know, like insights pouring into my head, just like, it, it was kind of like after a breakup, you really get breakup songs. So it was just like suddenly, okay, I get what spirituality is. I'm feeling this thing that people have clearly felt before. And there's a part of me that's all swept up in the rapture of it and seeing it as if I'm like in a mushroom trip or something like that. But there's another part of me that's just like, 
what the heck this exists and like wait a second what does that mean that's you know like just from a sociological historical perspective everything made so much more sense and this part gets kind of meta but it's like it dawned on me at that time that there's clearly people who are getting this is while i'm having it still i'm hanging out with my friend it dawned on me that there are that this should be studied that there's something going on in my brain that uh you know i thought it was more special than it was for sure typical of secular people who aren't really thinking about this kind of stuff and just have one like that's one of the weird things is when i'm talking with spiritual people i'm a total noob it's like first splash in the pool this is just beginner stuff but at the time it felt huge for me right and i thought it was more rare than it was because i thought somebody would have i just thought things would be different if people think had these all the time and knew with knew that they were real like just that you can feel this way rather whether you're seeing something true or not whatever but just that you can feel like that so i thought i should tell somebody i thought it was pretty rare and i also thought it was really cool how i like read myself there and it felt like i got there with logic which i also had this framework of sort of understanding it through meditation and i remember the teacher saying you know you can have special experiences blah 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 so i kind of sort of was putting it in a buddhist lens which is just like these are experiences and they come one after another so i sort of knew what was going on also getting my mind blown also having this neuroscience thing and very much just feeling like i should tell a scientist because i thought it was like rare that i would be able to be in a position where i was like having it and thinking scientifically about it and it just felt like it would i should be in a brain scanner at that moment so that seemed logical at the time that still seems logical to me now and i don't know what to say like maybe it's kind of naive like i didn't know it i didn't know that this was an issue like i figured that neuroscientists and ted talks and psychiatry was all talking to each other so i didn't know that i was stepping into this like whole old thing but then i went online and like googled some of this i talked to one friend he told me about this thing stream entry and then i looked and was just like whoa people are seriously talking about getting enlightened and stuff like that so i i feel like i was pretty conscious of the situation i was like okay people are going to think i'm crazy but maybe there's a way to maybe if i collect these articles i can show that i'm not in case i like it really comes down to it and i'm like dealing with people who are saying you're crazy then i can show them these articles and you know i had a book uh my stroke of insight by jill bolt taylor which i just had on my shelf because i found it in one of those boxes in the neighborhood and i heard her ted talk and i was like this is cool so i had that book prepared my data my defense basically <laughs> and then i started calling people so i called a family friend who's a doctor and <laughs> told him hey i want to get a brain scan cuz i'm like i'm i think i got enlightened basically <laughs> was what i thought or like a little bit enlightened you know i'd heard about these four stages i didn't know there was stuff even before that or like what it was um and he was like then those services are not available like you can't just walk into a lab and basically ask for a brain scan it, it, like you can't do it especially during covid if this was a few days ago whatever happened like the biomarkers are probably gone but i was still feeling it i was like no nah, something's still kind of happening you know it was less so i still wanted to go and then this doctor who's a hormone doctor endocrinologist he's like you sound kind of manic and i'm like well first of all i just figured out that i have add and i'm am manic because i'm like going through emotions and stuff like that and listen to me this is how i talk normally like super add thank you for your concern don't worry about it you know to be fair to everybody at the time i'm actually going through this so i don't want to too much downplay anybody's valid concerns about the fact that i was sounding non-ordinary i was feeling non-ordinary and i was acting non-ordinary because that's how i was feeling but i you know no never a harm to myself or others from my point of view anyway i talked with my brother he got a little worried kind of like introduced me to his friend who was a psychiatrist and like phrased it as they were helping me they were like kind of telling me like oh we're going to help you find a neurologist and do this cuz uh, my brother's had some interactions with uh, neurologists for like body pain and stuff so i don't really like talking about this part cuz i don't want to like throw people under the bus too hard but they basically totally fucked me <laughs> and that's the truth of it they uh my brother never saw me during this time 
he filled out this form that was um, it's called a form one or form two. I can't remember which one exactly, but he filled out what he can do, which lets the cops come to my house and take me to for a mental health check. Again, I understand the concern, but they they like basically entrap me. Like they said they were helping and they were just analyzing me and they made a mistake. And it seems like lots of people do that. Like it's feels super shitty because I had all that research before, but like, this is how people act when people start talking about spiritual stuff, they put them in. Yeah. It's very dangerous. It's very very dangerous. Talk to them about this because they don't want to listen. And first of all, uh, recently in the last you know year and a half, I think the medical field became or is bordering criminality right now. I am, and I'm totally responsible when I say that because for a doctor not to uh, see the patient because the patient is not job, that's criminal, that's unethical. They swear an oath to protect and save lives and they are not doing that. And especially in the field you mentioned when they, I think they take any uh, or they, they want to have any chance to take a healthy person or a person who goes through this type of uh, symptoms and this type of uh, awakening and lock him or her down to study her, not to treat her properly, not to understand what's going on with that person, but to experience, to take, make her a, him or a guinea pig pretty much. I mean, this is my approach to what they are doing these days. They are not looking well, at us as, from a holistic point of view. I wanted to be a guinea pig. That's what I was saying. This is why it was so stupid. I was like, study me right now. I'm having this thing like e- either put me in a brain scanner or don't. So um, I tend to agree with a lot of what you're saying. I think there's a lot of, this is a new word I've learned, iatrogenic uh, damage and uh, pain being caused. So iatrogenic is kind of when diseases or pain is caused by doctors. So it could be they operate your wrong leg and I give you iatrogenic damage that way or in the psychology, mental health, I don't really like the word mental health, but like psychology field, psychiatry field, if they, it's easy to misdiagnose and treat somebody wrong and actually have uh, traumatized care by interactions with the mental health system. And this is not um, some extremist point of view. I've, I've tried to survey the territory after this has all happened. I hear people talking about this on like hardcore psychiatry podcasts, saying there's a problem with the way that we're that we're uh, doing this and patients are getting hurt when they're being mistreated. And there's an issue here. And it's a lot um, of Mac practice uh, yeah. <clears throat> cases out there. And it's official. I think in the US alone, it's more than 300,000. Um, and no one is taking responsibility and they don't want to you know, publicize this type of um, incidents. And um, the problem, I think, is starting in school when mm-hmm. they are being trained as doctors because they want to look only at facts they don't want to understand there is a different realm than the physical one and as long as the school teaches them one thing mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what type of doctor you are medical doctor psychologist you know um, they are not going to look into it because they are going to be afraid that they might lose their license or anything any type of repercussion from the medical field itself not from mm-hmm. the patient as you are a willing patient to understand what's going on with you, yeah, they are not <clears throat> going to cross into different type of mindset just because yeah. they are afraid. Well, the messaging I got as I interacted with a bunch of therapists and psychiatrists and like, you know, I think I'm kind of different in some ways than a lot of people or I've responded differently than many people who go through something like this where they'll get super anti-psychiatry or anti-psychology. Whereas I've like gone the other way and just dove into everything. It's like nervous systems exist. Consciousness exists. Behavior exists. Nobody has the answer completely at this point. We just don't like there's researchers at Columbia who are researching something called non-local consciousness. And there's like monks and brain scanners. And I don't know, things are getting weird within science now. And the message I got from psychiatry basically was like, we are the, branch of this that doesn't care that much about your subjective experience about yourself and i'm like okay well that's dumb (laughs) that's just stupid like that's not that's like a scientifically invalid approach to this but let me just finish the story quickly and go over the hospital part and then get into what we think is going on so 
I'm going through all this stuff. Basically, if if you haven't had spiritual stuff before, the word spiritual is referring to a collection of specific experiences that really happen. And that's the thing that I can ground of it. It's like we see practices like yoga, meditation, we call those spiritual. And when you feel feelings from those, the thing they're not trying to do, but something that happens is you feel spiritual feelings. And some people, I've heard them compare it to tripping, like saying it's like acid or something. And I'm, I've been quite adventurous with my, uh, with my uh, psychedelic use. And I would say that it's like that in the sense that things seem and feel different, like you're in the world, but things seem, seem and feel different, but just like different drugs push you in different directions. Like, oh, I'm high on acid. I'm high on ketamine. I'm high on whatever, on MDMA. This spiritual direction, it's like, it was just like, oh, this is spiritual. So it's going to slow it down too much. I kind of explain what that is, but it was like, super cheesy love and innocence and just like synchronicities and feeling connected to the universe, whatever. So I'm feeling that. And there's kind of five days between when I talked to my brother and when I ended up in the hospital, everything's just super hectic in my life. Like people are freaking out left, right, and center. I feel like I'm seeing things super clearly. And I think maybe because I've had this like undiagnosed ADD, like probably a little bit spectrumy, completely dissociated, just like experience uh, of being a person before and then switching for a week and a half to like, oh, I get it. I'm a normal person. And I've just got this ADD stuff. And then switching to this other mystical thing going on. I'm like totally discombobulated looking for my sense of self, but also like I know how to ride out a drug trip. I think I was pretty much maintaining what Buddhists call like equanimity. And I was like, there's some shit going on. I moved in with a friend for a couple of days and was like, yo, can, can we hang out? I'm like going through some stuff. We're chilling. I played a bluegrass show during that time. I was reading. I was showering. I was eating like it's kind of high basically, but it was fucking fine. Anyway, people are freaking out. And this is something I'd like to add. So people I really love and I know who really love me, they also responded kind of in a way that was sympathetic with the, with the hospital. So the way that I like to approach this is to look at it from that lens. Because something I learned from being a tour guide and taking multicultural groups on trips around the world, like basically my clients used to, uh, they were expats from all over the world who lived in Dubai, UAE, Qatar. So I would take these busloads of people of all different ages, all different cultures on trips in Ethiopia, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Cambodia, whatever. And like, I really saw, it sounds like some cheesy spiritual stuff. And like, it is that too. But I really saw like, in the time when I was normal, people are people like humans are humans. People are mostly good. I felt that like I've seen that around the world. Like I've kind of learned how to get along with anybody. When I left Canada, I really thought that like religious and spiritual people were stupid. And I was just like, this has to do with the bandwidth of intelligence. And if you're into this, you're dumb. I think that's kind of how our brains rationalize not being into it in a way. But when I traveled, I met lots of spiritual and religious people, both like hippie backpackers and I was a tour guide. So we would go to temples and we would go to whatever. And by the time I was done, I had friends who were monks and friends who were whatever. And I was still, I guess, what I would call secular and not into it. But I was like, all right, you people are people too. And you've got this thing going on and I don't really need to, like, you're not as crazy as I thought. And some of you are pretty nice. So whatever, that's where I was. I'm going through some stuff. Oh, uh, whatever. I'll just leave that thought where it was. I think people are responding to this in a way that's like deeper than you're a psychiatrist or you're whatever, because dude, my own brother, I know he was looking out for my own good, but he did all this shit, you know? And uh, we're mostly cool now, I think. But anyway, um, so I'm meditating with a friend. This is happening. I just want to do spiritual stuff. What does spiritual feel like? It feels like the kind of thing that makes you want to listen to Tibetan chants all the time and meditate. So my buddy comes over, who's also like pretty secular, but also getting into meditation and has had some experiences. We're sitting there meditating, the Buddhist chants, and then the cops show up at my house. Takes like half an hour to get my stuff together. Cops are so nice to me. My buddy's there vouching for me. I'm saying, hey, can I like gather my notes? I kind of expected this. I had some sort of strange experience. I was phrasing it as an outlier neurological experience. And they're like, you're pretty cool. This is fine. They don't even put me in handcuffs. We have a great relationship. And then I get to the hospital and it's like a total shit show. 
they they it was just so absurd the whole time i was there every doctor i talked to i was like let i'm trying to be smart about this i'm only here because i was trying to do this and they're just this total weird stigma fuzz thing man i've just again as a tour guide traveler never been treated like that i don't like the way that i don't like this like psychiatrist patient dynamic it's fucking weird i've done a bunch of therapy and it's like you talk to each other and listen to each other and when i was in there it was like are are you euphoric and i was like yeah and they're like hmm what are you talking about that word means like feeling amazing as far as i'm concerned so anyway i don't really give a shit and i wasn't playing into this whole thing where it was like i think a lot of the time when people end up in the hospital because of this these sorts of things they don't have a computer full of articles by neuroscientists sitting there in a locker that the doctors are saying like we can't look at that for your own safety and i was just like this is bullshit i'm not i'm not going along with what you're saying and i was like meditating shooting love out like a care bear when i went in there and then like 4 hours in i'm human i wasn't allowed to take dexedrine i didn't they weren't really feeding me they locked me in a room with nothing to do and i started not being so nice to them and like taunting the guards and whatever i refused a blood test cuz i knew i wasn't high and i hate needles and then they started being mean basically and uh yeah they were just a bunch of nerds i don't really want to give it more credit than that they were a bunch of dorks and it's the exact same as when back in the 60s they said that gay people are insane and then they just had a vote and then gay people weren't insane and then the same is what we're seeing with psychedelics strong subjective experiences cause growth we see this mdma is in stage 3 trials maps exists tim ferris is a psychedelic advocate and pretty into meditation and there's this ridiculous thing going on when they were on this whole like girl interrupted one flew over the cuckoo's nest timeline and i'm like no what are you talking about so anyway they extend my stay from a one hour or like from a few hour check up to a 3 day thing and they made me take ativan at night because i was singing and they never even asked me to be quiet they were just like you have to take this pill or we're going to give you a needle and i was like well you know i'm scared of needles you got me there and i know what ativan is that's fine i'll take some ativan but still don't appreciate it because i don't think you should suppress this stuff when it's going and then the next morning i talked with like the first doctor i talked to who didn't seem like a student who was doing their they, they were all like in their late 20s they weren't old scary doctors they were kids the next day i talked to the first person i talked to who's over 40 i'm pretty sure and he's like brings out this thing and he does that thing okay we understand you're doing this and i was like dude i'm not doing this anymore we haven't met and like i'm going to try to be nice to you but this is fucking bullshit i've been trying to treat this like a neurological thing none of you have looked at my computer i've been completely consistent the time that i've been there yeah i'm feeling weird and acting weird because i'm having one of these things you don't want to think it exists not neurological fine we're in canada i have freedom of religion i changed my mind it's not neurological it's a religious religious experience you have to let me go or i'm going to sue your hospital and he's like okay slams the thing shut there's no change in my behavior let me go i'm out in 20 minutes and i wanted to like argue them about that and be like what the hell like you can just say that but also i'm like you guys don't mess around at all that was a terrible experience like again tour guide comfortable in weird places i did not think this was going to be an issue i was laughing when i went to the hospital i wasn't even upset for the first 2 hours but that's completely fucked. It's not how humans should treat each other. I don't want to sugarcoat it. I can get all spiritual and talk that language too, but this is just like completely absurd that this is even still an issue. And uh I don't even want to be an advocate or like a social justice anything. It's way more fun to me that to like realize that we can do this thing called awaken and I'm resentful of the fact that I'm like bogged down and traumatized when I was having such a great experience. But also Screw those guys. I don't give a shit. I'm not scared to talk about this. When I was talking with them afterwards, um I would I sent so many emails being like, "Yo, I'm not trying to sue you. I'm not trying to like do anything like that. Can we just talk about this?" Like I I came in feeling amazing. I left feeling traumatized. And then they're like, "That's your subjective opinion. We followed protocol." And I'm like, "It's my subjective opinion. You're a mental health hospital. If I come in feeling amazing and leave feeling terrible, you've failed." you're like not doing what you're supposed to do and now you're just because you're the boss of consciousness and you're allowed to say that i had a manic episode because i was euphoric more had more self esteem than you think that i should because i've realized that like i'm a divine being and we all are so i'm feeling better than you think i should feel 
because I'm not sleeping as much as you think I should be. I went to sleep fine every night. I was waking up after like four hours with lots of energy. This is in all the literature about these things. And because I'm super talkative, yeah, I have fucking ADD and I'm in a hospital being questioned. This is very uncomfortable. The, you have mania. We don't have to listen to what you say. We don't care that you're saying you're traumatized. It's bullshit. So I kept trying to communicate with them, not realizing that I wasn't going to get somewhere because it seemed so obvious that this is, was what I was saying it was. And then the last thing they said to me when I tried to deal with them was, um, you know, I was finding these things like the Emergent Phenomena Research Consortium, which is um, a collection of psychiatrists and neuroscientists who meditate and have these kind of experiences, which are like, if, you're, if you haven't had one, it sounds like the wackiest stuff. And if you're on the other side of it, it's kind of like, we just don't talk about it because it's not cool. It's like talking about being high. It's like, it's more about feeling good and being a good person all the time and that kind of stuff. But sometimes you totally trip and it's just, you got to be careful how you talk about that. So I forgot where I was, but anyway, oh yeah, I showed them this emergent phenomena research consortium thing, sending them links, being like, this is an organized, this is what I'm saying my thing was. Can we talk about this like grownups and be like constructive about this and and try to learn something from what just happened. And then I sent them stuff from this, uh, this Dr. Willoughby Britton, who's, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with her. She's someone I heard about with this. She's got an organization called Cheetah House, which is like for meditators in distress. And I guess she, well, she has this amazing thesis that she did with a, a team of other people. And it's like breaking down the types of experiences that people have when they meditate. It's like, sometimes you see stuff, sometimes you think stuff, sometimes you feel stuff. Uh, and she like categorize it smart and scientifically. I'm not a scientist, but I see that she's doing this and I send them these two things and I'm like, Hey, it's, it's, uh, we know that meditation causes strong subjective shifts. That's what happened to me. And you, you did that. She's like, well, that meditation thing, that's a religious belief. And I'm like, all right, I'm done with you. I got to go on podcasts now. So then I went and started writing medium articles and doing podcasts. And honestly, the whole thing just feels kind of silly that I have to be like trying this hard and doing it. And it's not really, uh, I I'm more surprised than anybody. Like, that's the thing. That's why I went on this. Uh, that's why I tried to tell a neuroscientist. Cause I, I also didn't think that spirituality existed. If I was on a spiritual path or had read anything about that, then I would have been like, Oh, I'm having a spiritual experience. But because it surprised me, I was like, not I'm special, but like, this is really special what's happening right now. This is cool. We should study this. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I've, I've been disappointed with the medical field for, for a long time now. And you mentioned a key word there, protocol. This is what is, they have a, a rut in their, in their brain from the school that they cannot go left or right of that protocol. They cannot get out of the, the mental rut because that scares them. They don't know anything else but the protocol. And that's why I'm, I'm telling everyone and I'm very adamant about if you don't have to go to the hospital or to a doctor, stay away because there are healers out there who didn't go to school for 10, 12 years. They don't have $150,000, $200,000 debt they have to, to pay back. So they will treat you as a human being, not as a, as a number or a patient. And they will look at you outside of any protocol. They will create a protocol for yourself only, customized protocol. You know, that's the, the beauty of working with someone from, uh, let's say, when I say traditional, I'm looking at the Asian medicine, not what yeah. people call these days traditional medicine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And they call the other medicine non-traditional. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the, the big mistake to, to start mm -hmm. with. And I think the positive lesson from your story um, is that anyone can have this type of experience of enlightenment or awareness or stepping on the spiritual path, even if they don't meditate all day long, even if they don't go to the church, they, if they create the, the necessary circumstances for themselves, you know, the the spiritual source, the source, the, the divinity will hear them, will kind of meet them halfway and help them uh, the same way you got help and had that, that experience. So as you mentioned, we all go through most of our you know, lives, like half of our lives unconsciously. And very few of us awaken when in their 20s or early 30s. 
Mm. <clears throat> so it's not too late to not give up on the idea of the fact that you are spirit, you are creation of yeah. God and you have God within you. So we have to treat each other uh, kindly. Agree, man. That's really what it's all about. Like people talk about uh, realizations with these kind of things. And they put it in these words that like I would never have understood before. Like I realized that I am nothing or I realized that I am that or something. And then uh, I would say one of the things that I realized to me is it just feels like a big old game of, of neuroregulation. It's like we're nervous systems on a planet and we can do all these things and make all of these choices. But some things that we don't have choices about are that we regulate and that we co-regulate. So basically we got these three brains. We got this like reptile brain, this mammal brain, and this human brain basically. And the way that that works, like the mechanism is, you know, reptiles, they scamper away from their moms and they're just good to go. Like the way that their nervous systems respond to the environment, it's different. It's like less developed and they're, they're individual things and they kind of function as individuals. And once you get into mice and stuff like that and monkeys and whales, we're social creatures. So there's a very real way that consciousness is shared where it's like a push and pull of our, you know, mirror neurons and stuff where our, the way that we interact, we're social. And then once you put in the human brain, which is all sorts of free will and choices and different stuff, which is, you know, neurologically different from what we see in the animal kingdom, there's this whole other thing going on where we get humor and spirituality and love and all of this stuff and more complex, you know, language. And, um, with all of that, at every single level, we're regulating and co-regulating. You don't have a choice of those things. You have a lot of choices in life, in life, but the way that you act and think about stuff will affect how you feel. This is not hippie stuff. This is science. We know this to be true. Gratitude practice builds new stuff in your brains. And a long time ago, people figured that out because they were like, oh, I'm a person. What feels good? <laughs> yes. You know? And then we also co-regulate. We know this. If you're hanging around with a super happy, with a bunch of super happy people, it makes it's good vibes. Hanging around with not super happy people, bad vibes. You know, somebody punches you, they co-regulated you into not feeling so good. So it's like, if that's what we do as nervous systems, then we should just do that as good as we can. And it's kind of like feeling good is the is the beacon. It's, you know, and it's a special kind of feeling good. This is what I think about this psychology and spirituality stuff, which to me just feels like I'm a nervous system and I have certain feelings and I put words to them and it's like consciousness. And then they act like they're so different, but it's just different words for like, you know, it's like mental health and psychology until it's spirituality. You just keep feeling better and better. It's like bandwidth. And it's just like good vibes, man. <laughs> like the hospital wasn't good vibes. And there's like a real common sense element of this, which is just like, if you're, if you're such a good doctor that you don't have common sense, it's like, come on, man, <laughs> you still got to be a nice person. Yeah. I mean, we have to admit that we are part of the ecosystem, either we like it or not, either we believe yeah. it or not. We are part of the ecosystem. And some of the, uh, some of us are more aware than, than others. And yeah. the more we stay in enclosed um, uh, structures like our homes or buildings and we don't go out in nature, that uh, vibe will be negative. The more we go out and we, you know, touch a tree, a flower or the earth, our vibration will be more positive and we'll understand each other better. So it's up to us how we want to, to live our lives in fear or in happiness and gratitude. That's simple. Can I ask, can I ask a question? Please. Okay, if you were the, the king of everything, you know, you, you've got the joystick of, of the world and the way things are, are working right now. And um, you can't kill anybody. That, you don't have that power. Um, what are five changes that you would make to just the way things are going? You could just be like, we're not going to do this anymore. We're going to start doing this and this is how it's going to be. How do oh, we fix this thing? Yeah, there are so many angles. First of all, I will take all the politicians and decision makers and I'll put them under a control mushroom session or psychedelic sessions. That will change them completely. After maybe the, after the second one for sure, not after Agreed. the first one. And they will cry like babies after they will understand that they are part of the 
um, global consciousness and how yeah. much damage they did to the society and to the world uh, overall. And I give them MDMA too. <laughs> After that, they get MDMA to feel uh, what that good vibes feel good. Yeah, DMT, the toad, whatever works for them, but under control so we don't lose them. We want to recuperate them and be good leaders this time. That is such a great idea. <clears throat> Second, um, we will implement all the um, free energy technologies, which have been suppressed. And I talked to my previous uh, guest about it. And that will eliminate uh, any type of uh, mining, coal, you know, nuclear, anything else. That will free up more land for the power corridors, take out all the iron and, and the, the power lines and the bed vibration, turn everything into gardens and parks. That will, that should um, transform humanity, should transform Earth eliminate pollution by you know cleaning up the um, the oceans the moment you stop pollution then you can um, take all this garbage out of the uh, of the oceans and then recycle that garbage in a way that uh, serve um, society and then let other people or the majority uh, give them access to um, this type of resources, meditation, introspection, um, healers to teach them how to heal themselves and to go inside and open up uh, their pineal gland and the, the third eye. Um, you know, controlled psychedelics with shamans. Let all these um, indigenous uh, tribes share their knowledge with us so we understand our connection with Mother Earth. So all this in... Uh, coming together, all these initiatives coming together, I think should uh, increase the level of uh, consciousness on, on Earth. I love it. Doesn't it just kind of seem as simple as that? It's like, just look at the, just take an afternoon and look at things from this angle. And you're like, oh, yeah, okay, I see what you're on about. Um, yeah. I love that list. Did you have that planned? Have you thought about this before? Oh, I, I talk about this on my uh, <laughs> on various interviews with my guests because they they bring forward you know either climate change or the medical field or the political goons. So I thought about all, all this, but we need to, again the the political uh, will to implement it, and there is zero political will to implement this because they are all controlled, and I'm not afraid to say that they are controlled and they are on their last leg right now and they are desperate and they are pushing everything they can onto us so, yeah, so we have to stay strong and, and awake and we will win for sure because you know light and divinity is always on the on the side of the good people or the awakened people because we are all that, good yeah. we are all good but yeah um, yeah we're are all good. On the, more on the light side than the others it kind of feels to me and this is a metaphor like it's a big blanket, you know, if like the whole universe is consciousness and we're like little points of uh, coagulated consciousness looking like humans, then it feels like love and good vibes has more density and pull on the blanket than bad vibes. It's like if you want to be super bad vibes, you can like really tug on the blanket in that direction. Um, but it's like not as, you know, it's easier to be naughty in a way. It's like a little hard to feel those good vibes, but once you're just in this loop where you're just like loving everything and loving yourself and I, I'm sometimes there and sometimes not, I'm not very awake whatsoever. That's the funny thing. This is just like, I shouldn't be the one talking about this. Cause I just had one tiny little thing and got excited. It's like, it's a whole awakening is a process. It's like, I literally had the, what people think of as like the very first thing. And then you're back just like being an idiot again. But it's like when you're more loving, you can pull on the blanket more and do more good. And it just seems like that at every level. It's like, doesn't everybody function? We know this. It's like when you're happy, your brain's moving more fluidly and like everything looks nicer and it looks healthier. It's like going from wilting to blooming or something like that. I think it's so funny how we like, how it's just not part of our, our, our culture. I see it as something that's happened over time. I think a lot about like interpersonal neurobiology as sort of like weather patterns, you know? So I've been in other countries and the vibe feels like this and it feels like that. And I can imagine that over time, you know, I kind of uh, like to float around the nervous system and 
I can really follow you when you talk about connecting to the universe and being part of nature and stuff. I'm like right there with you. A lot of the time I like to talk about this in my most basic way. It's like spirituality, it's old timey, subjectively developed neuroregulation. I look around right now, see Bessel van der Kolk and all these trauma informed dudes, these like leading trauma specialists saying basically exactly what we're saying about the medical system from the vantage point of working in it and then going to do other kinds of therapies. So it's like, they're saying the same thing. So this isn't some woo woo. I mean, it's woo woo and it's the neuroscientists now. And it's just kind of squeezing out this old school mental health. Like what the fuck? We don't work like that. It's not how it is. So they're saying like yoga is such an amazing way to feel good and EMDR with doing this stuff with your fingers and like breathing. And it's like, oh, and like psychedelics. And it's like, oh, it's because people do things that feel good. And people figured out a long time ago that this feels good. And they do it to get their spirits up and feel good. And this should be incorporated into medicine. It's totally banana. You know what happened? I think a long time ago, we got too excited about science. I won the science award in high school. I love science. I want to try to tell a neuroscientist about this. I wasn't into spirituality because I was into science. And then I read enough science and had a spiritual experience. I was like, oh, it's the same thing. It's just fucking things our bodies can do. So it's like, it's really so silly. I I felt like there's been this thing where I'm trying to, especially when it was happening and I was like feeling myself feeling amazing and people are jumping through all sorts of hoops to be like, no, you're crazy because of this. You're crazy because of this. And I'm like, all right. But like, I feel so good right now. And that's the main thing. It's like, good vibes, dude. I know my vibes are better right now. People are freaking out. And it's like, it's a really strange feature of being a human that we can't tell each other this with language. And like, because it feels like it's this war, it's this us versus them thing. But it's like, you know, this thing, Shakti Yeah. It's like you tap someone in the head and give them a spiritual experience. I wish I could do that because I would just be in the hospital being like, bonk, 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 bonk. And then they'd be like, oh, and I'd be like, see, and they're like, sorry. And it's like, what are we doing here? You see all these yoga, like, it's just so confusing that we see spiritual people as like stupid until we're on the other side. And then it's like this looking glass and you're like, hey, this is amazing. First of all, you should come over here. This is this whole horses and water thing. This is dope. But then also these dudes on the other side, because science has gotten so good and you know, we're comfortable outsourcing. Oh, well, I see you have these four symptoms. You're just too happy. You're manic. That's what they say. I went to med school. And it's just like, no, you're just a dork. Like you've clearly never messed around with what it feels like to be a person. You've clearly never taken mushrooms. I'm sorry. I trust Sam Harris more than you. He's an atheist neuroscientist who writes all about that. I trust Stan Groff more than you. I don't care if you just went to med school, you 30 year old nerd. Like people are wrong about stuff. We used to keep slaves. We used to look where gate uh, rights are right now. And how it was back in the day. It's almost weird not to be a little bit queer now. Look where it was. Less than 50 years ago, it was called insane by the same people who are calling me crazy now. It's like, dude, you guys don't know what you're doing. And it's so silly. (laughs) And it's it's funny. I mean, I don't want to keep bashing the the medical field. But if you look at the uh, what artists do in art school, they learn about human body, muscles, positions, uh, skeleton, everything. What the doctors do in med school, uh, med school, the same thing, but they go deeper into veins, you know, blood uh, circulation and some brain work and things like this. But in the end, all they do, they look at the database and they plug in your system. And at the other end, they see what medication is mm-hmm. recommended for your system. You don't yeah, have yeah. to go to 12 years of, through 12 years of school to yeah. just prescribe something from a database and become the mouthpiece for the pharma industry. This is what the doctors have become. And I'm sorry to say yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, dude. They are my a... brothers and sisters. And I'm yeah, yeah. sorry. And again, another known fact is they don't want us to be awake. That's why they gave us all this medication because smart, awakened people won't be obedient. And the, the, the political guys, the, the politicians mm. know that. We will rebel. Awakened people will rebel, won't take orders anymore. I kind of see that. And I also have a real hard time looking. Well, first of all, with your uh, explanation of the medical system, I think is like, that's pretty much spot on. It's like a system that's justifying itself, 
that's that's being more obedient to protocol and missing this like yo i don't care how many books you have and how whatever that is an offense to common sense to say that i shouldn't be included in a discussion about my own mental health it's always been ridiculous and now it's even more ridiculous with what we know about validation and neuroscience and how nervous systems actually use work put a sock in it psychiatry that's not how we work for the and then it's just like you know you got to keep the thing going and we got to be sensitive to that it's like this is uh th this it's not going to look like this in a bunch of years i don't know what it's going to look like but it would be very i think a domino that should tip which is just it's just like this conversation should be happening in a way where it's not this like psychiatry anti-psychiatry it's like hey we're all in a tangle together you all went to med school i truly believe the ones who i was dealing with in the hospital I, if they were on my tour groups i'm sure i'd get along with them like people are mostly good but they've just stepped into this weird role where it's this confrontational thing we've got to take off the hats of patient psychiatrists and be like okay we're in a mess and we've got to solve this this ain't right we've got to be considerate of all parties think about how some people are attached to their diagnoses some people you know, dexedrine helps me. I'm, I feel like it's medicine for me. So I'm, I'm not against all pharmaceuticals. It's, I couldn't meditate until I started taking dexedrine and now I'm getting off it. But it's, I, me and pharmacists agree, chemicals make you feel good sometimes. I 100% agree. <laughs> and um, the, the whole, uh, we just got to untangle this thing and start looking at it for what it is. And it's really interesting because it is basically trying to get secular people to believe in spirituality, which has not been done before, but that's where the science is pointing towards. And there's this very strange like flip where even people like my dad, for example, he was like pretty resistant to this and now I've like hammered it into him, but it's still like, he can look at all the science and look at Sam Harris and look at what Gabor Mate and Van der Kolk are saying and whatever. But it's still like you don't feel it till you feel it. And that's just the fucking truth of it. And we have to talk about it like that a little bit and be like, it's kind of like tripping or being a heartbreak or love or an orgasm. So I get so circular about this and I can already feel, you know, I've spent a lot of time this year. Maybe I'll steer to this for a second because I feel like I can. This was not um, a fun experience. Like this whole hospital thing. Now they talk about this thing called the dark night, which usually comes after these big pop off experiences. And you can get super into that and sincere, but just to explain real quick, when you're in love and it feels great and then you break up and you're not in that situation, it doesn't feel so good. When you get really high or drunk and you feel great, afterwards you get a hangover. There's this old experiment with monkeys. They give them two apples and then they take one away. They still have more apples than before, but they feel bad. Dark night. You feel fucking great. And then it kind of, <laughs> you don't feel like that anymore. And it's tough. So I don't want to blame things. You know, nobody lost their temper, but me and nobody, you know, I, I, I try to rise above it and account for my actions and stuff like that, but, and see the whole thing as path and whatever. Now this is cool. I get to talk with neuroscientists and be on podcasts, but this was very, you could see me freezing up. This is what happens when people try to talk about trauma. Like I don't have the emotional ability to like actually talk about with this at the depth that it like affected me and was like the worst fucking experience of my life. It, it was just so unnecessary and I was never scared and I never felt like I was going to be in there for a long time. It was just so offensively stupid and intrinsically felt bad to be fucking locked in a room and treated to be punished for something that I felt like First of all, amazing. It's like you think about set and setting. I wanted to be, I was, I was meditating with a friend. I was taking care of my shit. I was going to have a barbecue with my buddies that night. I was fine. This hospital thing, it's really bad. What we're unskillful. I like this Buddhist word. It's not good. <laughs> unskillful, not bad, not good. But it's like, I felt a lot worse. And what's happening with what people are calling awakening kind of feels to me like, your mind sort of hatches and you get into, you feel more good and you just feel more like a human being. And there's no good way to put it. People are like awakened to your true self or like uh, become one with every, or just whatever, you know, you can't put it in good words, but it's like wilt to bloom, bad vibes to good vibes. So a very good process was happening. And just like my friend sent me a picture of this, just like when you're cleaning up a room, 
you know, sometimes you take everything out and it looks a little messy before. This is how trauma works. We know this now. I was the, the spiritual thing. I don't know what it's all about. And we're working on the science, but the stuff, why I was so emotional and whatever fucking memories were flying out of my head. And I was processing with them and feeling them just like these trauma informed experts are saying. So it's like, you can't get rid of your baggage without losing your shit a little bit. Like, that's the thing. It's like this absurd thing where people think that mental health is keeping it together or, you know, that's the model. And it's like, that is not how we work. We've figured out and people have tested for themselves. That's why all these millionaires and celebrities, whatever, are taking ayahuasca and doing whatever, because you're searching to jiggle out your trauma and whatever. And it's just even on that level, man, never mind the spiritual stuff, just on that level. You know, I just been reading Gabor Mate for the first time. I'm hanging out and they're like, dude, do you guys not know who Gabor Mate is? This dude won the Order of Canada. He's throwing down here. It's like, it's two different stories and they can't both be right. And a bunch of us are like, the, the, my Instagram scene is like so overwhelmingly like awakening, healing, consciousness, blah, 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 this stuff now. And it's like, so many people are into this and they're glowing and they're feeling so amazing. And then mainstream mental health is just like unfalsifiable. There haven't been studies. It's like, dude, we don't need to do so. You can't do studies on subjectivity. Neuroscientists are saying they're fully awakened. What does that mean? Like, shut up. It's no, we're not approaching this the right way. It's like trying to do math on poetry. It ain't right. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Man, it's, it's, uh, yeah. It's an yeah. interesting discussion. Um, I'd like to uh, know your uh, take on uh, the concept of uh, transhumanity. What does that mean? When um, humans get uh, some implants and don't, they are not human completely, but transhumans oh. with some uh, AI embedded into, into their bodies. Oh, sure. Yeah, I got lots on that. I went to philosophy school a long time ago and they would talk about cyborgs and stuff back then. So essentially, well, especially now I'm viewing consciousness from like a more non-local perspective, which I don't really know what that means or can't explain exactly. Um, but it feels a bit different, but basically conscious, we're already cyborgs. The fact that we have outsourced our, um, even writing, you could see as a sort of cyborg activity. We're like outsourcing our consciousness and, um, storing things outside of ourselves. My computer is like a brain in my hand. The way that I interact with knowledge is completely different than before. I don't have to know how to do math. I don't, you know, the way that we can the way that phones have changed conversation where you don't dig into stuff, you just look it up and like get to the answer. It's totally changed the, I bet if you could do archeology span on brainwaves throughout history and just see it as a sort of trail of like, what is like neurochemistry throughout history, the technological advancements of the past 50 years, cars, planes, whatever, we're basically already cyborgs and we're just getting closer and closer to putting it in us. So I think that this is, a uh, fascinating area that's just inevitable and something about all of this it's just kind of unfolding right like it's just kind of happening and start to mess with that sense of free will and it's just like it seems that humans are animals that do spirituality and do science it's like that's just what we do like how monkeys eat bananas and fling their shit we're just like so it's inevitable that we're going to do this and i think that like all technology it's exciting and it's scary it's going to give like everything, man, look, we're connecting through the internet, talking about con consciousness and, you know, awakening and using the internet for that. I can, you know, I can go on meditation forums to say, Hey, like it kind of looks like uh, things are a little bit vibratory today. And they're like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Try this, you know, and we can reach out and help each other. And it's amazing. Also there's porn and dark web and all sorts of sinister shit and environmental implications. So it's just going to be the next chapter and the next thing of like, this is what it is to so get specific. Invent, yeah. Something, invent, I'm, uh, something I think is yeah, interesting but, is this Neuralink thing. Yeah, right? exactly. I was about to ask you about so, that. Would you embed that into your brain? Uh, I'll wait for like a few rounds of development on that and see where it's going. <laughs> I'm not going to be the guinea pig, but here's what I'm excited about it. I think what we will prove, and this is what um, I would say if I've realized something, Imagine consciousness like this in like an orbital model where at this orbit over here, like around where my fingers are, we'll call that like normal grown up. 
you know, normal feelings, normal, whatever, no mental health, no neurodivergent, whatever, you know, no addiction. And then we'll have this be like wilting going to the middle and then blooming going to the out. So in the middle, we'll have like mental health problems and fucking trauma and this kind of thing. Like just the person's not acting good. The person's not feeling good. It's not desirable consciousness. And we've got mainstream consciousness. And then a lot of this like self-empowerment, inner giant within whatever up to spirituality and full awakening I kind of see it as like a journey through layers of consciousness where it feels different to be someone in the world so when this happened to me i didn't have a better word than i was like did i get enlightened i feel like a bunch of knowledge poured into my head i feel amazing i feel spiritual enlightened i don't know i don't have a word for this talk, talk to my friend he's like stream entry level one awakening so what I've learned about this, first of all, this was not stream entry because those are about like non-experiences. It's like you can have a bunch. This is how I think of it. You can have a bunch of experiences, kind of spiritual experiences. And then these dudes talk about it. You meditate, meditate, meditate. Boop, feels like you're not there for a second. And then you come back totally different. And lots of people talk about this and you could do it a bunch of times. And then it's like totally different in another thing. And that's the end of that trajectory. So they call fully awakened. So. I see this as like bandwidths of consciousness as just like, it's not meditation. It's not Buddhist. It's descriptions, like a tour guide of just like, oh, I'm here now. It feels and seems like this. And it's all kind of sort of like you can't see inside someone else's thing. I think that Neuralink is going to highlight this. And I think that once we start connecting humans together, it will we we'll think that it's just going to be ideas and feelings. And very quickly, one of the first things we'll see, I think, will be that people are literally at different levels of consciousness. Well, we can call it higher and lower. I think one of the issues with this too is like, you know, you're in a field of consciousness with all your friends and the people around you because that's what interpersonal neurobiology does. And then you really do transfer to a higher level of consciousness or whatever, which doesn't make you better morally or whatever, but it kind of makes things feel and seem better. And you do get a little cocky at first, it can seem. And then it's like, I'm awake, you're not awake. And it's like, nah, it's not, it's not really, it's kind of a rude word at this point in time. We got to be sensitive with this. But I think that Neuralink, it's not a direct answer to your question. I think putting computers in my brain sounds super cool at some point in time, but like, I'm also aware of like fucking capitalism and what's happened with the internet. So I'll chill before signing up for that. I think it will highlight these. We're going to hook someone up. Dude, imagine you hook up like a Midwestern, English teacher who listens to top 40s to the Dalai Lama. It's going to be like <laughs> they're not experiencing the world in the same way. And we're going to see that. And then it's this will be, I think people are having different. I, I'm very like optimistic of how fast this awakening thing is going to happen. I'm also aware that I'm like impulsive ADD and don't like to wait for stuff and think that it's really unfair. And I'm looking at the hospital aspect. But dude, people are going off like popcorn. You hear it before would see copies of be here now and hear people like oh yeah there's this awakening happening man once you get to the other side of it it's like it's so normalized and you could just see people like going yeah very interesting uh, approach thank you for for sharing that with us uh, then do you have any spiritual uh, daily practice these days um yeah i do meditation i'm doing kind of uh, do nothing meditation now because i find that i have um sort of mixed psychological and meditative talk, I have a bit of um, like hypervigilance. Like one of the ways I'll deal with not with my emotions and not feeling so peaceful or whatever, just having shit that not being enlightened <laughs> uh, is to do. So I'll like try to do this, try to do that and get, try to write a lot, try to make music and always feel like I have to be on the go, go, go. Very ADD-ish. Um, so before I was doing a lot of sort of Vipassana meditation where it was kind of sort of putting my consciousness on body sensations and sort of following instructions. And then uh, I've experimented with a bunch of different stuff in the past year. So this month I'm kind of doing this do nothing thing, which I learned from Shinzen Yang. And I'll sit for like the past few days of kind of haven't been doing two hours a day, but for about six weeks, I've been doing two hours a day of um, that sort of stuff. And I'm sort of still in the stage where I'm at the buffet, you know, it's just is still exciting to me. Like, holy shit, spirituality exists. So like in the past years, I got like tarot cards and learned how to read my astrology thing. And I just looked at everything and was like, 
oh, it's all fun if you figure out how it's fun. So my mom was a Tai Chi teacher back in the day. So I've been doing some Tai Chi and Qigong online. I like yoga. I've always done that. But mm. I'm still kind of a goof. I'm not like a model of a spiritual. <laughs> I'm just kind of exploring. But I like to meditate. That's good. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. How about you? Um, meditation. Pretty much meditation. And I listen what kind? to um, Kriya Yoga, uh, which is funded by Paramahansa Yogananda. And can you send me a link? I can, yeah. can try it out. I'll do that cool. for sure. Uh, Kriya, uh, I think it's like moving. Is that what yeah, Kriya means? Uh, it has some um, exercises like um, to bring energy into every single part of your body. But mm. it's more about uh, breathing. There are different types of um, breathing exercises. And um, you get the final one after um, uh, you get part of the... Um, um the organization so there is a initiation process and after that they will reveal the the final ex- breathing exercise so um i'll, I'll talk fun. to you more about it offline so. i think that's cool and you, you know i used to would have heard that as like it's a scam but i think that that's more and you know sometimes you look at something like scientology when it's like yo you guys cost too much there's too many levels it seems not so chill but I think no, there's this a... is, I mean, it's not doesn't cost you anything. It's, oh. um, it's, <clears throat> you, it's oh, cool. very accessible. Well, that's so. different. And but I, I guess I was saying that sort of mystery aspect of all this. It's a funny thing. If anybody's curious about getting into it, I always feel like I'm preaching to the choir on this thing. It's like you don't listen to this stuff until you're at a certain level and then <laughs> whatever. But if people are listening to this, it's like the mystery part of all this. It's kind of fun. It's like the way you look at the world like this, it's a little bit more like a magic eye or like you're kind of trying to like see it a certain way to make your left and right brain do stuff. So something like not getting the final info until you're really buying in, it's like ceremony is fun and it's fun to feel like you're learning things like that. And it's also dead serious and this stuff is very powerful and it's good to have a little bit of uh, buy-in. Yeah. Then we think. are approaching the end of the, the interview. Any final thoughts? Well, mostly what I want to say is I'm trying to be helpful with this. Um, I feel like there's so much fun stuff to talk about with all this. And, you know, I, I sort of feel like I go into a role because it's hard for me to talk about the story and I just kind of joke around and maybe talk too much. And I'm not always great at back and forth conversation, but I feel like I've seen something really important with this and, um, I'm not always the best spokesman, but if people could check out uh, Cheetah House and the Emergent Phenomena Research Consortium to just see that there's people a lot more uh, scientifically presentable talking about the same issue, I just think this is really low-hanging fruit and we should be able to deal with this. And I hope that I've, uh, you know, sometimes I feel a little bit out of place and bouncy with this whole spiritual thing, but I'm stoked about it. So I hope... uh, Hope you guys enjoyed what I had to say and stuff like that. And thank you, Claudio. Claudio, thank you. yes, for, uh, so for we having have to, me on. To speak our truth. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for. And it, it's all about good things. vibes. It's like we should squash the bad vibes that are happening in the hospital. And uh, it's silly that spirituality isn't part of North American lifestyle. It's like it's like stroking yourself like a cat. It's good. Yeah, and bad vibes around us as well. Not only in a specific uh, location, we need the good vibes. So once again, thank you for, for joining. Oh, and I got a podcast too. If you want to listen to the Dang Lantern podcast, it's on Spotify and other things. Uh, the first 11 episodes are me just talking. And then I, I just did my first interview. Yes. So we'll if you want to hear more from me, I'm over there. Thank, thank you. you so much for having me on. And uh, to my guests and my viewers, thank you for uh, watching. Like it, share it. Uh, support me on uh, patreon.com slash Claudio Morgan. Get a free copy of my book when you visit my website. And until next time, love and gratitude.